Tardis y bienvenidos a Caracas. Welcome to the Baliedro, the home of the 2012 Olympic qualifying tournament. My name is Liam Kenny. I'm joined in the commentary booth today by my colleague Jeff Taylor. And this is the third of four quarterfinals we have on offer for you today. You can see that honors are even amongst the European and the African teams. Russia beat Angola in our first game, but Nigeria came out and beat Greece by one point in what has unquestionably been the best game of the tournament so far. And now we turn our attention to two competitions between Europe and the Caribbean, the first of which features the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia versus the Dominican Republic. There's Coach Calipari, the head coach of the Dominican Republic at the University of Kentucky. Jeff, have you caught your breath from the previous game between Nigeria and Greece? The breath is gone. The breath is gone for the rest of the tournament after that one. Well, this game features two scorers who are in the top five in the tournament. For the Dominican Republic, Al Horford averages 26 points a game. And for the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, number seven, Lester Bo McCallum, averages 22 points per game. As we can look at Coach Lazowski taking the helm of the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia team. They are here by nature of the fact that they finished fourth in Eurobasket 2011. Dominican Republic were bronze medalists at the FIFA American Tournament in 2011. Jeff, we've got two more games on offer, and I can't wait for this one. Well, I'm not going to make any more predictions, Liam, because we've just watched one of the real powerhouses in international basketball for the past several, several years go out in an upset. Uh, it is a very difficult tournament to predict because the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia began with a loss, and yet they finished first in their group. And the Dominicans have all the talent in the world, but we haven't really seen them in their full glory yet. Exactly right. Uh, the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia entered this stage of the tournament with a one and one record. They lost to Angola by four points in their opening game, then beat New Zealand. The Dominican Republic also came in with a one and one record. They beat Korea, lost to Russia. The former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia ranked 33rd in the world according to the FIBA rankings, and the Dominican Republic are 25th. We're going to pause momentarily here in the Poliedro, rise to our feet to observe the national anthem of this afternoon's two teams. Beginning with the national anthem from the Dominican Republic. A continuación, himno nacional de la antigua República Yugoslava de Macedonia. Now the anthem from the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia. Jeff, as I mentioned, we're going to see two of the top five scorers in the tournament. If you look at the three referees today from Canada, Turkey, and Japan, respectively. Of course, McCallum and Horford will be the two of the stars, but both teams have got the good supporting cast. Macedonia, of course, have got Pedro Antic, who averages 17 points a game. Ilievski, 
with 10 and a half points, and Boyan Stoyanovsky with 10 points as we look at the starting five for the Dominican Republic. The key guy may arguably, arguably be Francisco Garcia, plays his uh, professional basketball in the NBA, but he had a, a torrid time against Russia with only two points. Dominican Republic are going to need a strong performance from him. Yeah, they really will. Uh, Francisco Garcia didn't get on track, whereas we saw the Macedonians, and these are kind of household names in Europe anyway, after what happened last year at the Eurobasket. We saw them kind of start to discover what makes them a special team. And you know what? In a tournament play like this, Liam, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. You want to get better as the tournament goes on, and five, four of those five starting five averages double digits. That man right there, Jack Michael Martinez, is amongst the leaders in rebounds per game. And Al Horford has a double-double. So not only does he score points, but he also averages 10 and a half rebounds per game. The Dominican Republic will need him to be at his best. We're just a few minutes away from tip-off. If you just joined us and you missed the game before us, Nigeria beat Greece by one point, 80 to 79. Free throws at the end, sealed it for the Nigerians. And uh, we can only hope to have as enthralling a competition as that as you look at Coach Calipari, who's flanked by Del Harris. Coach Cal has come here, and I think it's, uh, you know, he's, he's realized, first of all, it's an interesting step just to go to the FIBA Americas Championship and then to come to a, an international tournament where you bring in different styles and really also encounter some pretty awesome teams like Russia. I think it's really, you know, he is, he is almost blown away. Uh, I don't want to say all, but he is full of respect for the national team program to have success because he realizes it's not just a case of getting together for a few weeks. I mean, you cannot leave any stone unturned to, to be successful in, in the international game. Dominican Republic are fresh off of their central basket. There's uh, Al Horford with his 26 points and 10 rebounds, so he's got a double-double. Dominican Republic fresh off their Central Basket Championships. They beat Puerto Rico in the finals, and so Coach Calipari was with the team for that period of a week to 10 days. He went back to Kentucky for a brief respite. He finds himself on the road again as Pero Antic with 17 points leads the former Republic of Macedonia as their spiritual leader. He is fresh off of his EuroLeague Championships with, with Olympiakos. Olympiakos beat Cheska Moscow in the EuroLeague Final by one point, 62-61, a couple of months ago. And I'm, I'm sure that he's hoping to avoid the fate of his uh, some of his Olympiakos teammates earlier tonight. Quite right. Many so, of them didn't play for, for Greece. So we are in the quarterfinal stage of the 2012 Olympic qualifying tournament. Just to remind you, the 12 teams have come here to Venezuela. Caracas nestled in the mountains along the Caribbean coast of Venezuela. Beautiful setting. We had a day off yesterday. We were able to go up one of the mountains and look over the city, which sits in a beautiful spot along the valley between the mountains. The 12 teams have come here. Eight are left. It's now a one-and-done format. If you win, you go on. If you lose, you go home. So in 40 minutes, one team will go back to the hotel and pack their bags. Three teams will qualify for the Olympics. So when you get to the semis, two winners of the respective semis will advance to London. There is the final. The, the final of this tournament is effectively the bronze medal game. So if you finish third, you book your flight to London. Nine teams have already confirmed their places in London 2012 to the zone, FIBA Zone Championships. Three more places up for grabs. This Coach Lozowski. It'll be the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia. In yellow uniforms with red trim. And Dominican Republic will be in blue with white. There's Coach Calipari. You know, I'm not going to undermine Coach Cal. Uh, certainly what he's done in his coaching career and everything else, but you know when you when you're in his situation and you come into this I think he really appreciates it and, and enjoys it, but it is a big commitment, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. And maybe that's why he hesitated to sign 
uh, and agreed to coach, you know, until quite a late stage really this year. And he's got so much pressure on him at Kentucky to recruit, to coach, uh, to do so many things. Uh, but he had a conversation with the, with the athletic director at the University of Kentucky. Obviously, he has the, the blessing of, of the athletic department of Kentucky. He's also got one of his assistants from the University of Kentucky. Rod Strickland is here. And the first alley-oop to Al Ford. Horford, he can't finish, but he goes up to get it. Samarjinski with a block. Here's Bo McCallop. Throw it to the wing. Ilyevsky turns the corner. And he'll go. And Al Horford hustles back on defense. Causes the turnover. Garcia's flanked out here on the wing. He doesn't get it. Inside to Martinez. Martinez with a turnaround. And Jack Michael Martinez. The blue headband gets the first basket. Liam, they got no joy whatsoever against Russia. So, I'm pretty confident that they're happy just to be facing somebody different right now. McCallum front ends his three-point attempt. Jack Michael gets the rebound, so he does what he does best. Snapples the rebound. Horford going to try and back down Pino Antic. Into the middle, draws the help from Samarjiski. Now, Jack Michael, can he make two in a row? He can't. And the ball ended up to Jack Michael Martinez late in the shot clock. He'd like to see your guard come back and take it when the shot clock goes under 10. Pino Antich loves to play on the perimeter. Drops it inside to Samarjiski. Samarjiski's going to go at Horford. Oh, beautiful left-handed hook by Samarjiski. Horford also likes to face the basket, so that should be an interesting competition between Ant Antich and Horford. Now he goes inside the paint. No good. Samarjiski with the rebound. Ilyevsky. Ilyevsky pulls up, shoots a shot. That wasn't even close. And Dominican Republic got back on defense. It's Coronado. Coronado with the mid-range jump shot. That is off the back iron. Hustles after it. He can't get it. And the Dominicans, Jeff, really need a strong performance from their backcourt today. Yes, they do. McCallum, the second shot is no good. Back iron. Inside to Samarjiski. Samarjiski, nice spin. And again with the left hand. Good finish by the big fella. Well, the contrast in this game for the Dominicans to the last game against the Russians is that the Russians gave them absolutely no time to create. I mean, look how much space Al Horford has right now. He can actually try to create a shot and everything. Coronado's shot is off, but he came in from out of bounds. So it'll go down as the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia ball. McCallum. McCallum yet to score. Does McCallum make the all-electric team, Jeff? Yeah, he was on it before the start of the tournament. Okay. He's terrific with that crossover dribble. Kicks it out to Antic. Antic tries to get Al Horford off balance. Oh, off the window by McCallum. He went right at Jack Michael Martinez. So McCallum's got his scoring account open. Boyden Stoyanovsky reaches in and fouls Fortuna. Sideline ball for the Dominican Republic. Garcia is closely guarded by Stoyanovsky. Stoyanovsky gets in the passing lane. Now the two referees are going to confer. I think Stoyanovsky feels like it went off Garcia. Excellent refereeing. That's the trail referee at a better angle, so uh, they get the call right to the referee. It's a turnover for Dominican Republic. Ilyevsky around the screen. Stoyanovsky. He's going to use the screen from Samarjiski. There's a mismatch now. Samarjiski shows his numbers. He's got Garcia pinned on his back. And the pass went to one place that he can't catch it right between his legs. <laughs> well, he was a little bit slow, to be honest. He could have maybe 
didn't look quite as bad looking at it in slow motion. Fortuna's inside shot won't go. Samarjiski with yet again another rebound. They just really struggle scoring the Dominicans, don't they? Yeah, they do. Horford does so much of that for him. Samarjiski missed a little one inside. That might have been the easiest shot he's had. Here's Garcia. Can he get himself going? Along the baseline, no good. Samarjiski, another rebound. Kick out to Stoyanovsky. It's two on three, so he'll pull it out. He'll give it to Bo McCallum. Played his collegiate basketball at the University of New Orleans. McCallum with a spin dribble, a shake, a shimmy. Off the window with the left hand. Bo knows buckets. Great move by McCallum. And we've got a timeout here as Calipari wants to get after his troops. The former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia with an early lead. 8-2 over the Dominican Republic. Poliedro, I'm sorry, I beg your pardon, viewers, welcome back to the Poliedro. Jeff, Dominican Republic are one for seven from inside the arc. They're really struggling to put the ball in the basket. Good time for Coach Calipari to take a timeout. It is, and, uh, but for some reason, the Dominicans do have a problem uh, with slow starts. And... You begin to appreciate how much they depend on the scoring of Francisco Garcia because as good as Warford is, uh, it's a five-man game, isn't it? And you've got to have you've got to have some balance. Fortuna, uh, maybe he could score some. I mean, they need somebody to get some points other than Jack Martinez and Al Horford. Well, they come out of the timeout. I would imagine they're trying to get the ball to Horford in a place where he can do some damage. He'll post up on the low blocks, Antich fronts. Nice high-low attempt. Martinez can't throw it inside. Terrific defense by the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonian team. There's a kick out to Ilyevsky. He shoots it. That's no good. Samarjiski has been immense on the boards. He wants it in the low block. He's going to go at Martinez. This time it's a right-handed hook. Samarjiski has had an impressive start, Jeff. He has, and defensively, the Dominicans are just missing it. We're not seeing any physicality. I mean, Samarzyski is off to his best game of the tournament. He has six points. All of them inside. Martinez with a spin move. And that's better for the Dominican Republic. Jack Michael Martinez. He has all of the team's four points. That's Caleb. Up top, reverse to Ilyevsky. Samarzyski. Ilyevsky keeps his dribble. Oh, and he just goes right along the baseline. And Coach Calipari is on the floor shouting at how you've got to stop the dribble penetration. This is one of those moments, Jeff, where he's probably saying, what am I doing here? Well, he said that very thing. McCallum. After the win over Korea, right before he walked into his press conference, he just kind of laughed and said, what am I doing here? Dominican Republic beat Korea 95-85. Samarjiski is unstoppable inside. But it, the score was a lot closer than that 10-point difference would suggest. Like the game was a lot closer, yeah. I mean, it was only really won by the Dominicans at the very, very end of the contest. Samarjiski gets his balance, goes up. He's fouled by Jack Michael Martinez. I, I, so, I really want the Dominican Republic to do well. I'm really... I've been looking forward to watching them play, and they just have not lived up to, to the hype so far. Not at all. Two NBA players in Horford and Garcia. Sam Marjiski plays his club basketball at the Chivos and Ritos. Lithuania, and of course, we're going to see Lithuania in the nightcap. So settle in. we got two basketball games for you. It is Europe versus the Caribbean. The first one here is... Dominican Republic versus the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia. Lithuania, Puerto Rico to come. Jack Michael inside. Step through move. Nice move. Can't finish. Fortuna with the rebound. He gives it to Al Horford. That's no good. There's a lid on the basket. Nice follow up by Fortuna. That's 
six points now for Dominican Republic. I wonder how far the Dominican Republic is from here. Caribbean country. Silver right away. That's a good question. Of course, Dominican Republic on the island of Hispaniola. It's shared by Haiti. Zamarczynski can't finish the little one inside, but you can see that the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia are giving him a lot of touches. Well, I can tell you one distance that's important, uh, Jeff. From here, Caracas to London is 7,500 kilometers. And the road to London for three teams starts here. McCallum up top. Right now, Russ is well on their way to uh, London. McCallum with the medium range jump shot. That's no good. Samarjiski keeps it alive. Gives it back to McCallum. McCallum lost it uncharacteristically. I'm sure he's annoyed with himself. He's asking the ref for a hand up. But uh, he gets it from Fortuna quite sportingly. I think one of the great mysteries is how we see the for a team like Greece go out. And yet a team like the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia who lose the first game to, uh, to Angola. And beat really an overmatched New Zealand team. They, they labored to, to do it, didn't they? Yeah. And, and they're in such a great position. They're on top of the Dominican Republic now. They're, they're one step away from the semifinals. New Zealand were up by 14 at halftime of that game. But the uh, former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia came back to win, which is what brings them here to the quarterfinal stage. Horford will face. Now he's going to bang. And his shot is short. Kind of shot, but it didn't have the same polished finish that Samarjiski has shown. That is a velvet shot by Ilyevsky, and it gets a shout from his teammates on the bench. And the few Macedonia fans that are here, the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia fans have traveled to join the team. Martinez with a step through. Good move. Well, thank goodness for Michael Martinez, because uh, he seems to be the only person is able to put the ball in the basket right now and, and really I don't I don't think the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia are worried too much about trading baskets at this stage. McCallum might have got away with the travel but he had the presence of mind and the wherewithal to finish on the spin move. Jack Michael Martinez with six of Dominican Republic eight points and notably Al Horford has not yet scored. Do you not think that right now, as Tchaikovsky comes in for a clear do you not find that uh, the team in yellow is finding it a lot easier when they've got the ball? Oh, they do. They really do. The defense in the middle of the Dominican Republic is soft. Samarjiski's had some some uh, good looks inside, close to the basket. Coronado, his shot is off. It's not a good time to come to the dance without your dancing shoes. Dominican Republic are down 10. Where was the rebounding from the Dominicans? Ilyevsky. Oh, nice head fake. He drops it inside to Samarjinski. It's a good call by the referee on the baseline. It is three seconds. But uh, Ilyevsky was able to uh, use the old school fake, show the ball, and get the defender off his feet. Samarjinski's just in the lane too long. Watch this. Ilyevsky's going to show it. Whoop. And then wrap it in there. Seconds. Garcia. Can't get it. Martinez. Oh, He's driven by Kachevsky. I beg your pardon, Kachevsky. <laughs> There's all kinds of skis on this team. I'm going to apologize for bundling that name. He's my favorite uh, player in this team, by the way. Georgi Tchaikovsky. Yes. Horford with a spin move. Still no good. And Martinez with a tip. I'll tell you, without him, they'd be in trouble. Yeah, he does damage on the boards, both ends, offensive and defensive. Tchaikovsky. McCallum. Ilyaski. Good movement by the Yellows. That three is up and it's good. Tchaikovsky with his first basket off the bench. 
players like Tchaikovsky to give all of us hope that we can still play this game that we love. Georgie Tchaikovsky, 34 years young. He's got the ball in his hands, going to throw it ahead. Here goes McCallum. Up and finishes with a finger roll. So a spurt from the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia sees them extend their lead to 13. It is their largest lead, and it's a worrying start to the game for the Dominican Republic. They just look lost. They look like they have no idea how to defend the uh, former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia. They're not really, they don't have any nice movement on offense. It's, it's very static. It's ugly. Is, uh, and this is the bronze medal winning team for the Team America's Championship. Play. Yeah, and the, and the champions of the Central Basket, which, which was just, you know, two weeks ago. And I thought they would come into this tournament, uh, Jeff, with a bit of an advantage. You know, they, they'd be sharp. They came to a competitive tournament, whereas the Europeans and the African teams were playing friendlies before this. But uh, there's certainly no evidence of that sharpness on display here. They do have the continuity. They have a lot of these guys. Well, you know, some of these uh, Dominicans have been together for a while as well, but I know for a fact that the uh, Macedonian players, the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonian players, have been uh, together. They know each other well. They play on the same club sides, many of them in Europe. And for a team that really, I think they haven't really even gotten out of second gear yet in this tournament, you know, they're looking pretty good. Seven of the players play domestically in the National League. That's awful helpful. It means you can get together throughout the course of the season. You get a look here at uh, the Poliedro Arena. So we're in the Caribbean Basin. And so if you look at Venezuela on the map, where we are in Caracas, to the left of Trinidad and Tobago, it's uh, not far from Aruba, Curacao south of the British Virgin Islands and really not that far away is uh, the Dominican Republic just due north really north northwest a short journey so it should feel like a home away from home they brought a hardcore of loyal fans who are ever so proud when they sing the national anthem at the start of games so, can the Dominican Republic get themselves going? They find themselves down 13 points. Martinez to Horford. Horford's going to need to flex his muscles and get involved here offensively. Slides down the lane. Doesn't get it. Baez in the game. Coronado with pop. No good. Martinez is at it again, and somebody has got to put Martinez on their hip. He has 10 points. He's been a fence on the glass it just can't be possible that a guy that really has a hard time getting off the floor can have the success that he is but i mean it just goes to show you the efforts there for martinez martinez with five rebounds That's a sign of Horford coming to life samarjiski with six rebounds he has the most that shot for samarjiski was short Horford. Long look from about 18 feet. Still no good. We've got a push on Stoyanovsky. Void on Stoyanovsky. Right now, I would not mind having Horford out there. Let him take some chase. Because at least he's doing something well spotted by the referee. Jeff, we've got another set of brothers, the Stoyanovskis. Of course, we just watched the Aminus for Nigeria. Brotherly love. Stoyanovsky is a great story last summer. He really uh, contributed to the national team's success at the Eurobasket. Good defense here by the Yellows as they push the Dominican Republic all the way away from the basket. And uh, Coronado just cannot find his jump shot. Why doesn't he put uh, Ramon on there? Okay, he's going to put somebody else in Sosa. So Calipari goes down the bench and grabs the number four. Edgar Sosa is ready to check in, and McCallum says. Well, while you're thinking about it, coach, I'm going to shoot this three. Don't mind me. The former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia have doubled up the Dominicans. They lead by 14, 26 to 12. Martinez, no good. Long rebound. Inside the Horford in the post. He's going to Tchaikovsky. Horford, turnaround hook, no good. Fortuna, no good. 
Horford keeps it alive only momentarily. The ball goes to McCallum. McCallum lines up a three and he rattles it home. And Bo McCallum is starting to heat up. He's got 14 points. Yeah, somebody had told me this is a bricklaying convention, and I was watching the Dominicans play right now. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, they just look awful shooting the ball. Yeah, when you're struggling in your offensive sets, you'd like sometimes to see can you get something in transition. And the, you know, not to diminish the play of the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, but, you know, you would expect to be able to knock down a few of the jumpers that they've had. They are facing a 17-point deficit. They're 6 for 23, the Dominicans, from inside the arc. 0 for 2 from outside it. Baez picks up the loose ball and lays it in. And Martinez, quite sportingly, helps up Tchaikovsky. Yes. Great. Nice sportsmanship. Gallup. Now he goes in the lane. He finishes with his left hand. He does it. Just wouldn't fall for him. Hit every bit of the rim but the bottom. Martina. Oh, McCallum almost picked his pocket from behind. Tell you what, if I'm John Calipari right now, I'm thinking let's make this game as crazy as possible. Because yeah. in an organized game, they just look awful. They have no idea about how to. They're just not in any rhythm. And maybe if you, if you, you know, try to get some steals, try to get some fast breaks, some turnovers, maybe, maybe that'll kind of jolt them to life. Dominican Republic have got four points off of turnovers, and they only have two fast break points. Now, your man, they just showed Josh Asselin, would be the one candidate for me who could go in and potentially get something. Get something. Asselin had a good opening game. Al Horford with the travel, and he's really struggling. But you know he's going to go off at some stage. So you've just got to continue. As Horford tries to deal in the post. You've just got to try to continue to contain him. And see there how the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia players collapse yes. on the basketball. Good defense. Although seeing that, you can almost see how maybe they could have caught a foul on Tchaikovsky reaching over. Speaking of fouls, this one goes against Baez, number 13 for the Dominican Republic. Eulis Baez. So Horford's going to come out. And Josh Aslan, number five, will come in. Aslan can face and shoot. Ilyevsky to his legs. He'll slip it inside. Turnover. Garcia. Can the maker probably get something in transition? Baez fills the trail spot. And it's just a poor pass. You know, that's frustrating because... Eunice Baez has gone the length of the floor. He's pinned a guard in a low post. Sosa's got to deliver a pass there. Yeah, and I'm also wondering about this being a numbers game for the Dominican Republic because they've got Carl Towns who clearly isn't going to play much. So that takes you down to 11 players. Uh, they've got a couple of other guys that I just don't think are going to see any court time. And when you look at some of the other teams, like the Russias and... The Nigerians, those teams use all four players, don't they? Yeah, they do. They go deep in their benches. They've got good squad rotations. Ilyevsky's turning the screw. It's 32 to 14. Of course, fans of international basketball will know that Charlie Villanueva of the Detroit Pistons is not with the Dominican Republic. Coach Calipari decided to leave Villanueva out of the squad. Wasn't quite fit enough to play this summer, according to coach Calipari yeah I just I really you know if they go out early not you know like this you know questions will be asked it could be a team harmony thing as well but they said it was only a fitness thing very strange Martinez good work in the low block no good Tchaikovsky comes up with the ball so the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia can sit their two leading scorers, both McCaleb and Antic, are on the bench getting a break. If you're going to make a run at the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, this is the time to do it for the Dominican Republic. 
Sosa to Garcia. This guy has really got to start to score, Jeff. Wow. Foul called on Asselin, setting the screen. I'll tell you what, if the Greeks, and that's the big if, I don't think they are, if they're watching this game and they're watching the Dominican Republic, they're probably asking themselves, can this team still be in with a chance of advancing and not us? While the Greeks were the highest ranked team in the tournament, fourth in the world, coming into this tournament, Lithuania, fifth in the world, but uh, it's adios to the Greeks. Stoyanovsky, that shot short. And if you're a Dominican Republic fan, you got to say, vamos. Corporate's checked back into the game. The runner up the window won't go. You know what the ironic thing is, uh, Jeff, the fans didn't see it, but when Garcia turned the corner on uh, Ashland's moving screen, he nailed a beautiful jump shot. Because it went for naught. Well, the only thing that you can cling to right now for the Dominicans, uh, the fans, is that really it can't get any worse. Because um, if they, they just seem to be keeping the easy to keep it. It's, it's just like a mountain too tall to climb. Well, they've been here before. They were down at stages of the game to South Korea. Came back in it. This is the team that I was really uh, expecting big things from in this tournament. Olympido Fortuna makes the second. Free throw one of two. And Dominicans find themselves down 17. What a great pass by Ilyevsky. I think he put it right through Al Horford's outstretched hands to its target. Nice pass by Ilyevsky. Cruising. Absolutely cruising. Garcia. He backs out on the screen to good effect. Got himself in the elbow. Made the 15 footer. That's a promising sign. The Dominican Republic. Ilyevsky lets the left handed shot go. It is velvet. Ilyevsky with a sweet stroke. Is there one shooter on the floor right now for the Dominicans that can hit a three pointer? Tell me. Well, Aslan, you would hope. Yeah, Ramon can hit one as well. He's coming in. And you're wondering when Garcia is going to start to accumulate points. He's going to start at the free throw line. Fortuna comes out. He had a good first day against Korea. But really, he's uh, done nothing today. So Francisco Garcia scored two points against Russia in their previous game. They both came from the free throw line. Garcia plays for the Sacramento Kings. Went to Louisville from 02 to 2005. His teammates really need him here. So he makes both free throws. They just need to make the game crazy, Liam. I mean, if they don't, if it stays in this four type of set, they just look so uncomfortable. We expected it against Russia. We never saw it. Drop pass inside. Garcia comes up with a loose ball. He keeps his dribble. Dominican Republic were down at halftime. Oh. To South Korea by four. And there is a good shot from the baseline. And this is a timeout from Coach Lasovsky, which I think is a wise timeout. Both teams will go to the benches. And now, Dominican Republic finally playing with some purpose. That was better. Almost wondered why he passed it out when he was right under the basket, but maybe maybe a couple of three quarters fall. It'll kind of like allow them to, uh, to revive their chances. So I go with the three from the corner. 15 point deficit, 37 22. You look at Coach Wazowski there, who's talking to the former Yugoslav of the Macedonia team. This is the 2012 Olympic qualifying tournament. Caracas, Venezuela. Venezuela. Here's where we thought it was a good decision, actually, because he would have uh, had to have gone up against the big Chichetsky. Uh, nice release that time by. Uh, 
by Ramon. So Ramon has come off the bench, his team trailing by about 20 points, and, and maybe this is the guy that you have to turn to. You'd love in the tournament, too, when uh, players can rise to the occasion. But yeah, anybody looking for a destination for a holiday, come to Caracas, come to Venezuela just to uh, try some nice hospitality. Massive side, there we go. There goes Horford and he's fouled. This is an intentional foul, but uh, because it was an attempt to play the basketball from the front, it turns out to be a strange foul, to be honest now, Jeff, because it's the fifth foul, so it sends now Horford to the free throw line. He, I think he's sort of lucky that, you know, we have seen that called as an unsportsmanlike like foul, because there's obviously no way he's getting the ball. Now Horford will step to the free throw line. Ilyevsky committed the foul. Now Horford, of course, a lottery pick. 2007 by the Atlanta Hawks. Wow. Wow, that's... Uh, Al Horford still with a donut on the board. He has zero points. He just both free throws. McCallum. Touch pass inside. Goes back to McCallum. Good deed by Garcia, actually, to knock that ball away. Oh, Here's nice a steal. Hand. McCallum can't get it. Can Sosa get it? He lost it. You know what? It's a great hustle play, Jeff, by Bo McCallum, who does just, just enough to put Sosa off, but it kind of sums up the frustration here with the Dominican Republic. I think they're unfortunate not to have gotten a foul on that call as well. Reaching in. It seems kind of like you're running in place if you're Dominican right now. Even, even the, the opportunities you can't convert. You've got to be able to convert a fast break like that. You might be kind to Dominicans. It might be more like running in quicksand. That's exactly. Calabari just told the referee that he was fouled. And Sosa was fouled. Oh, and that's an offensive foul, well spotted by the referee, who was just getting an earful from Calabari. Well, it's Jack Michael Martinez who drew the foul. Well, Krzyzewski has no complaint. Watch this. He raises his, his left elbow. Definitely a foul. It takes some kind of pressure to knock that man. Jack Michael Martinez went to his backside. It's right. a non-shooting foul because it's a, an offensive foul. It's a really bad foul by the by his by him because you're on top. You don't want to give him some life. Nice pass by Garcia. Great pass pass by Garcia. It wasn't an easy finish by Orford. He still had some work to do. And he's able to get himself on the scoreboard with his first two. He'll get a lot more easy shots than that tonight, that's for sure. McCallum won't go. So now, uh, the Dominican Republic starting to come to the to the uh, dance here. Garcia with a crossover dribble. His shot is way off. We've got a foul here by Peter Antic, and it is Jack Michael Martinez. He just has a nose for the ball. He knows where to get. A couple of, a couple of bad possessions for uh, the former East Republic of Republic in Macedonia. You know, hurrying up that shot, the, you know, now might, I know that you like to uh, keep your timeouts in your pocket, but now I think you need to, rem you know, remind you guys, hey, these guys are sleeping. Let's not wake them up. You know, you don't want to give them a whiff of, of a way back into the game. So both teams have a timeout each. First free throw. He's almost on a double double. He's got 11 points, seven rebounds. He may get a double double before we go into the changing room at halftime at this pace. Come on, come on. And he misses the second. Well, he's struggling at the line, four of eight. Martinez has played some club basketball here in Caracas with a Coco Drilos club. Thankfully, we haven't seen any crocodiles. Yeah, that's right. Samarjiski comes in. I think this is a good substitute, too. And he, he is picks up right where he left off. Extremely effective in the post. It really is a case of the Dominicans uh, getting pressure up top and trying to get some turnovers, in my opinion. Samarjiski, 26 years old. And now Garcia drains a three. 
So Garcia probably isn't the one who's going to want to go to the changing room now. He's found his shooting form. We've got under a minute to play here in the first half in the Poliedro in Caracas. Ilyevsky's shot is off. Samarjiski grabs it. It gives it to McCallum. McCallum's going to back it out. We've got 40 seconds left. That was just Martinez being absolutely gassed. You can see he could barely do anything. McCallum just so explosive. Can't finish the easy one inside. It's a couple he's missed, Liam. So 11-point lead. Can it become single digits by the Dominicans? Sosa. Wants a screen from Horford. Horford's going to face. Straight pass. Horford picks it up to Sosa. Sosa with a bomb. No good. Samarjiski to Ilyevsky. Eight seconds. Seven. Ilyevsky. Time to conjure something. Four. McCallum. He's not going to miss that layup. Definitely not. McCallum finishes the half. And he puts the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia up by 13. 41 to 28. McCallum will go into the changing room with 16 points. And uh, after a flourish by Dominican Republic, they're going to go in 13 down. Well, really, they should be going down by much less. That was a really lousy possession to the Dominicans for the last third down. I got the perfect word for it. It was a lousy possession, wasn't it? I mean, you've got, you mentioned, you've got Garcia that's heating up. Um, just no recognition, and you can see the patience and the poise of Elieski there on the last play just to get it to Michaela, and finally he makes the layup. Look at uh, former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, they're 50% 50 50 from beyond the arc, 6 of 12. But Caleb leads all scorers with 16. Samar Jiski with 8 rebounds, and Martinez with 7. They've been, uh, they've been fabulous so far. Ilyevsky with 11, and Pito Antic is noticeably quiet, so you would expect that he's going to come in in the second half and get near his average. Well, he, maybe he doesn't need to, as it is right now. The tempo's there. Everything is to former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia's liking. Well, it's Lithuania to come, but we've still got a half of basketball here between the former Yugoslav Republic and Dominican Republic. Come back and join us in the second half in the Paliendro.
Welcome back to the Poliedro Arena in Caracas, Venezuela for the 2012 Olympic Qualifying Tournament. This is quarterfinals day. We're in the third quarterfinal match of the day, which features the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia versus Dominican Republic. This is uh, the third game of the day, but uh, we have a Europe versus Caribbean match here and a Europe versus Car Caribbean match to follow as Lithuania will take on Puerto Rico in the last game of the day. My name is Liam Canny. I'm joined in the commentary booth today by my colleague Jeff Taylor. And just to mix things up a little bit, Jeff and I are going to switch seats figuratively. I'm going to hand the play-by-play play, play, by play over to Jeff. And I'm going to sit back and provide a bit of color as we start the second half. Well, the onus is on the Dominican Republic. They're going to have to start to show something uh, i.e. offensively especially if they're gonna have any chance at all of staying in the hunt for a place in the London games They played pretty well at the end of the first half, but still some poor decisions ended up leaving them down by 13 at the break Fortuna back in the lineup along with Coronado and the long run in that's what we saw we saw Garcia finally finally uh, starting or finally finding his range that gets it back to a 10-point deficit Jeff this is great news for fans of the Dominican Republic first touch by Garcia and he makes a jump shot he's now got double digits so a promising opening by the NBA guard but I just wonder if they're going to be able to get him the ball because I'm sure the attention of the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia will shift to him pretty soon when we spoke to David Blatt uh, this morning, the first game featuring Russia, you know, Blatt said he thought Pumpershov did a great job on Garcia, kind of riding him through screens and bumping him and making things uncomfortable for him. Got a premier NBA big man trying to defend against Pera Antic. And gets called for the foul. And now Antic shows another part of his game. And this is... So really, you get the feeling that the European team is kind of inviting the Dominican Republic into the game. And good rebound from Horford. And they really, they really could. How much were they up by? They were up by 19 points, 20 points. Let's take a look at the largest lead was 20. So, so Jeff, this is interesting here because Pino Antic has yet to score, and I think this is his fourth foul. So it's just a bizarre game for former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia. I think if the Dominican Republic kind of, kind of start to believe that they've got a chance to win a game, get close to the Olympics, we might actually see them play with more of a sense of urgency. Because I think that's the main thing. We haven't seen it. Yeah, they need it. And um, I mean, symbolic of that is Horford only has three points today, and he's the guy who's the leading scoring in the tournament averaging 26 points per game so he's going to need to take on some of the burden of scoring well he makes that and now all of a sudden we've got an eight point game so i think that the last game nigeria greece was played at a much higher level than this one but it looks like we've got a close game uh, developing here Tukowski hands it off Tukowski, who puts it down gives it to Bo. Bo knows what to do. He puts up the jumper. No good. Jeff Stoyanovsky had a layup. He did, and he passed it out. And that is just a gift from Coronado. Sam Marczynski, a hook shot and foul by, no, by Martinez. That's a good possession by the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia. Get it inside to their interior player. He's got a nice touch both with his left and his right hand. Gets himself a trip to the foul line. Well, that was the three from Francisco Garcia. Back to a four point lead, but really the momentum is with that man's team right there. Orford inbounds it. Back to a five-point game. Semerziski has been strong today. Got 11 points. Garcia 
closely guarded by Boyd and Solinovsky. Horford sets the pick. Garcia gets it. Somebody's got to be open. Coronado in the corner. And he misses the wide open three. And the team in yellow, NKD, with the rebound. Samajiski. And they whip it around. Michaela gets the ball. Five on the shot clock. Four. Michaela kind of loses it, but gets it back. Misses. Gosh. Somehow. The Macedonian, the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, is getting back, but a charge called against. Is it Samardiski or John McCaleb? McCaleb. This is a quizzical call, Jeff. I'd like to see oh, this we've again. Got, we've got a little bit of afters going on here. Fortuna. Oh, look at that. And this is uh, referees need to get get to grips with this. You know, the foul. Yeah. John McCallum, Jeff, we're going to get a look at it here. Yes. He jumped up right into, uh, into Martinez. Yeah, the referees need to be smarter on this because Martinez flops here. There's no doubt about it. You know, McCallum goes up at less than six feet, and he uses his body well. There should have been a no call there. Well, tough call. Yeah, I mean, there's big bodies inside, and how often do you let them bang in the low post? All of a sudden, the smallest guy on the floor goes up inside, uses his body to good effect, and you get a foul card called against him. Well, Georgie Tchaikovsky is waving his finger at somebody, the enforcer for the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia. Garcia, another one! And seems to be kind of the sum total of the offense for the Dominicans. Well, he's feeling it right now. Michaela drives in, and what you don't want to do is get going. Upset. He had a few words with Fortina. Oh, knows basketball. Horford over to Fortuna. And just the sheer athleticism and hustle of Horford kept that ball with the Dominican Republic. Martinez. Goes to work against San Francisco and he's fouled by San Francisco. That's two. San Francisco's taking the bandage off of his chin. Don't recognize him. That's right. He started the tournament with uh, with a heavy bandage on his chin. So Coronado out. Fortuna out. Ramon into the game. Sosa into the game. And Pais goes into the game. And Garcia's going to take a breather. I'm not sure about the substitution, Jeff. You know, he's in the flow. He's Garcia. You might well, leave him in. They find Jack Martinez, but he missed it. Jack Michael. And now, former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia have upset Paul McCaleb, and he just flushed one right down the middle. He is explosive. This is the second time in the tournament that we have seen this side of Bo, and he is not a happy camper. That is bad news for the Dominican Republic. Now, all of a sudden, Jeff, these teams are jawing back and forth. They're exchanging pleasantries, and I don't think they're asking each other how they're enjoying their life here in Caracas, but as well, of course, the team shared the same hotel. I think it was a mistake by the Dominican Republic, especially Fortuna, to get into it with Bo McCallum, because ever since then, he's ratcheted it up. Goes right up the elevator there with a one-handed flush. Oh, he gives Al Horford a little bump on the way back, and he starts talking to his teammates. Well, if you see Michaela talking like that, he's pretty normal, you know, mild-mannered guy. But when you start seeing him doing that, you really must have upset both. Oh, he's extremely mild-mannered. I, I ran into him uh, in an airport and had a coffee with him, and he's just such a humble, down-to-earth person. Who picked up the tab, you? <laughs> Thankfully, he had already had his coffee, and I looked for a place to sit down. In street clothes, he looks like uh, he could be, uh, he's so young and boyish looking, he could be a school kid. That's a great performance from Samarjiski. Double-double already. Well, I, I really do believe that they probably did not know it for Fortuna, but he has basically just... Turned the switch on Bo McCaleb. Now 
has got 22 points. He, is he the captain of the All Electric team, McCallum? Let me get back to you on that one. <laughs> Ramon hands it off to buy it. Back to Ramon for three. Short. And such a tough shot that the Dominicans were able to get it back. And that shot was blocked. Martinez got it off just in time. And good hustle from Horford again. But then, I think Bias uh, is guilty of overpassing a lot. They get it back. Oh, and shooting in the three-pointer. And Bo McCaleb fouls the three-point shooter. Jeff Al Horford had a saddle on Tchaikovsky for two possessions. He was over the back. The referees didn't see it. Well, have we seen something like that before? I don't think it was like that at the end of the Greek game. Came from behind. You didn't see the Greece-Nigeria game. Vasilis Spanoulis pulled up with about a second left to try to win it for Greece from about 25 feet. And it was a good play from behind by Daganduru. Daganduru got the uh, ball in hand and referees didn't call it. Result Nigeria with a one point win. Oh, that's a big foul. Ramon, I think, can shoot it. Seems to be uh, getting some confidence now. Somebody else other than Garcia. Six point game. Lidievsky penetrates, puts it up off the glass. And now someone other than Boba Caleb scores for the Yugoslav Republic. Macedonia. Oh, beautiful play by Bias. Just kind of drifts into the lane. And really, Bias is, uh, has got that in his repertoire, but he tends to pass more than shoot. Damian Stoinovsky going to come in. takes a seat and is replaced by his brother. Josh Aslan also comes in for Michael Martinez. 16 on the shot clock. Tchaikovsky up top. Right by Horford. Now Ramon on Ilyevsky. And shift Ilyevsky. Back outside to Damian Stoyanovsky. And there's only one rebounder for that. His name is Al Horford. And here he comes. Hands it off to Coronado. To the jumper. Horford keeps a lot. I've not seen Coronado make a shot all day. Now Ramon for three. Good! And it's a three-point game. Get for Bo McCaleb to put his head down and go to the basket. For the MKD. Well, he's going to take the jumper. And it's good for three. 25 points. How do you leave the best player open on the other, on the other team like that? Well, it could be a case of the Dominicans being like the Nigerians struggling with the rest of the game and passing far late. Here's Horford, goes to work. And fading away from the basket, no good. And now, Michaela fouled by Ramon. I guess that's the one problem that you've got if you don't have if you have Horford taking the shot, he's not going to be in there cleaning up the mess. He's been so good on the offensive boards. Yeah, especially without Martinez, too. Martinez is off the bench getting a break. So you've got uh, Aslin and Baez. And uh, Aslin's going to come out now, and Garcia's going to come in. I think this is a good substitution, Jeff. Uh, Francisco Garcia was really feeling it. When a guy's got a hot hand, you want to keep him in the flow. Throw good. Back up to six. Back up to seven, rather. And could take it to eight. So eight points is the lead. You have the single game highest total was 30 by Al Horford in their opening game win. And it very well may be surpassed here by McCallum. He has 27. Horford goes in, strong move, contact, no call. Good, good, good defense.
defense, a wall of defenders for the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia. Now for Michaela. Michaela up top. Spins. Thinks about it. Dornowski. Boyd is Dornowski. Doesn't really caught fire like he did in the year basket. Now. Ramon to the corner. Good hustle from Coronado. Keeps it alive. Dornowski fouls Garcia. Chukowski is called for it. Stoyanovsky brothers are on the floor at the moment. One wears eight, the other nine. Speaking of nine, it's Francisco Garcia from the Dominican Republic at the free throw line. Speaking of zero and four fouls, Pedro Andrews. Yeah. He's uh, kind of cruising against New Zealand. He really never got in today's, today's game, incredibly. Garcia makes the second. Garcia now, Jeff, with 15 points. A much better performance than what he put together against Russia. Contact in the center of your chest. This is different from what American viewers might be used to. In America, you have to have those feet set, as we all know. But in, in FIBA, referees usually let you move a bit more. As long as the contact is in the center of the chest, you'll often get the charge call. I think the main thing is you can see why they call the charge. It was incredibly good, it was it? Yeah. Tchaikovsky is still upset. He, yeah, he does. He does have to watch it. He's starting to simmer over. But Chukowski now has uh, four fouls, so that's bad development for them. Michaela, and here's Fedor Chichevsky. He misses. The Americans can get really close. They've been on three. Telling because Samarjiski has three, Tchaikovsky has four, and Antic has four. So three of the interior players for the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia are in foul trouble. So they've got real problems. Yeah. Real problems, which means you want to attack that low post. Presumably, you want the ball in the hands of that man right there. Caleb, and I had the ball knocked away by Garcia. 
that, Jeff. Remember, we, we saw the Dominican Republic. They have a play set here. They're bringing Martinez in for the long baseball pass. We saw them in the game against South Korea. They've got a last-second play organized. You're going to see Fortuna and I think uh, Garcia kind of switch sides and run the lanes. It'll be a long baseball pass for Martinez. You don't think they're going to overcomplicate it, do you? <laughs> they could overcook it. And move to a basket for MKB. Yeah, you're right. It really is incredible that having trailed by 13 and really as many as 20 points in the first half, that the Dominican Republic have a life. So the question is, Jeff, will the Macedonian team, the Roman Eagles of Republic of Macedonia, come back with Anthony Tornado as we look at the free throws? The Dominican Republic 15 for 19 from the free throw line. That is terrific. That's what cost Greece the game. And a plus 10 rebounding differential. That's been, that's the key. And as you point out, the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, their big men are out of action. I mean, they're, they're, they're going to be dropping like flies. If you're the Dominican Republic, surely you need to feed the ball inside to either Martinez or Al Horford. Oh, I think you're exactly right. Uh, Antic still has his shooting top on, so that would lead us to believe that he's not going to come in at the start of the quarter. And, uh, yeah, it's a matter of uh, getting uh, touches inside to Martinez and Horford. You've got Vlado Ulyetsky, you've got Bo McCaleb. The Stoinovkis haven't been as influential tonight offensively as you would, uh, as we're, we're used to seeing. Yeah, Stoinovkis haven't scored. In fact, uh, Jeff, I'm just looking up at the scoreboard. There's only four players for the uh, former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia team that have scored. And as we said at the outset, they have four of five starters who average in double digits. As you're looking at the beautiful side of basketball. People wear sunglasses. It is, uh, it is incredible, and I still think that the Dominicans, if they win this game, they would have a hard time moving on because they just don't seem to have the mojo. Whereas, I'm really disappointed by the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia for letting them back in the game. I mean, they, they were just cruising. Yeah, they were. They were comfortable in the first quarter and the second quarter. And a 13-point halftime lead is now two with your interior players in foul trouble. Well, Coronado, he's certainly struggled today. He's got just two points. And Garcia, he's got the ball. He's got 15. And then it goes to Horford, and that's what they need to do, and that's what they do. Well, he was trying to get the foul. Garcia. Oh, the foul from John Martinez. Thank you. Yeah, it's a great play by the Dominicans to get an early touch to Horford down in the low post. And Martinez shows us why he's irrepressible with the offensive putback. I'll tell you, the best hope for the MKD is the presence of Bo McKenna. Well, Chukotsky is in the lineup now with the foul trouble. Uh,
last summer with the national team. He'll be not playing after. He'll be stepping down. The veteran. Now Horford. Garcia from the corner. Oh! Francisco Garcia, three for five from behind the arc. They tried to sell it, didn't they? But instead, it's his fourth foul. So that's another interesting development here. We're still got 7.30 to play. The best rebounder in the tournament is going to make his way to the bench. Yeah, that is not a good development. So advantage, perhaps, former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia. Michaela into the lane and over. Nice, but that's the score. Now, Coronado. And it goes to Baez. He misses. Oh, how did Baez miss that shot? Calipari punched his air the, the air with his fist. Can't believe it. Ilyeski drives in. No good. Horford. Another rebound. Garcia for three. Good! <laughs> Biggest lead of the game for the Dominican Republic. It's four points. Garcia is really feeling it. Got to try to get him touches on the That's perimeter three. and Horford inside. Three points is the lead. 62-59. Ilyevsky for three, and he hits it. We're not going to go quietly. This thing has really come to life here in the second half. Garcia for three. Go! Are you kidding me? He's unconscious. Somebody better ring the fire department because Garcia is in fuego. Chichetsky, Ilyevsky back to Chichetsky. The reach. Chichetsky gets in there. Horford up ahead. And Fortuna's going to get the layup. And the Dominicans now can smell it. They're up 67 62. Too largely to the inside. The, the great rebounding of Horford and, and the shooting of Garcia. Who's looking on that? Getting the Dominicans on their feet. Great comeback from the Dominican Republic. Garcia, and you said it, they needed to get him back on the floor, and they did, and he has shot them into the lead. 22 points for Garcia, but I maintain MKD still have a chance with that man on the floor as well as Ilyevsky, and you have to think that the Stoyanovskis can figure in this at some point. The 
Chesky goes to work against Bias and just spins and scores. That was easy. Ronald Ramon. Here's Garcia. Bounce pass, and it goes to Baez, and fouled by Jachewski. Baez gets bailed out here. Get no real place to go. The referees gave a foul to Jachewski. What do you think is the best chance for MKD at this point? Just go down to Jachewski again? No, I think you need to keep the ball in the hands of uh, McCallum. And Ilyevsky, let them try to create something. They could have a mismatch, though, with Tchetsky if he's going to be guarded by Bias. He didn't look too good defending that last time. Oh, no, you're right, yeah. I think they really need Bias to step up if they can. He's been quiet in this tournament. Well, Bias with his free throws goes to six points. Stoyanovsky, they go right back to Juszewski just like last time. The spin move goes right at him and tries to hand it off to Antic. Well, this is the Dominicans' game to win right now. It is. This is money in the bank of Dominicans. Martinez on the bench with four fouls. He'll stay there as long as the lead remains comfortable inside well, the Horford. Yes, Horford had the shot and missed it. There's contact, but no call. It's the same thing at the other end. They're letting him play. Ilyevsky pulls up at the line. No good. And foul on Fortuna. So the sheer tenacity, the hustle of Bo McCaleb keeps the ball in the hands of MKD. And Jachewski comes out and is replaced by Sam Marziski. Great minutes from Jachewski. Sam Marziski will come in now. He has three fouls. This MKD team compared to last year's kind of like the run on fumes. Just don't have the uh, the same oomph factor. Mojo is the word you used earlier. Yep. Just didn't want to be repetitive. Sam Marziski, it's a good good move. Maybe get him back as well. Over to Dorinovsky, and that is just not a foul that needs to be committed, but at least they're not in the bonus. But now they will be. Next foul, they'll be in the uh, bonus. I think if John Calipari uh, could be in this position when he was down by 20 points, he would have laughed. It didn't seem possible, did it? No, they've come from a long way back. We'll see what kind of guts and character the MKD team have as Ilyevsky gets stripped. Yeah, Ramon just took it right away from him. In the bias, it goes to Hunter! The Dominicans move ever so closer. Semifinals. Incredible scenes. Imagine the Dominicans making it to the London Games. They would be the talk of the town of Santo Domingo. They're renowned, of course, on the Dominicans for their baseball, but they've got a basketball team as well. Bo McCaleb for three. Good! Bo's not going to let him die. Come on, Bo! That young man wants to go to the Olympics. That's what's at stake here. Loser goes home. Francisco Garcia up top. Hands it back to Horford. Thinks about it. Gets in. Cross court to Ramon for three. Go! Nothing but the bottom of the net. This is two different teams, Jeff. This Dominican Republic team are completely different from the team that went to the change room. It makes you wonder what Calafari said to them in the locker room at halftime. 16-year-old Carl Towns at the end of the Dominican bench is now standing up and cheering on his teammates, but Stoyanowski, I told you they would figure, and sure enough. That's his first points of the night. Boy down Stoyanowski. They are not a bad team in crunch time. The former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia. Watch out. Francisco Garcia looks for an opening, drives in and just lays it up. And the MKD defense right now just is not what it was. Well, Antic came over from the help side, but he couldn't contest because he's got four fouls. Easy lay-in. 
for Garcia. Lieski puts up a three. And Fortuna with the rebound, but Caleb got a hand on it. I thought Ilyevsky was fouled there by one of the Dominican guards. Well, this is just incredible. And Francisco Garcia drives in, banks it in. I'll tell you what, it really is uh, a matter of the Dominicans just holding out hope that the shots would start to fall. And it just seems like MKD had gotten tired. I don't see Calipari having done anything differently, do you? Not at all. They've made shots. You know, they they benefited from the fact that uh, Antich was in foul trouble. I think that was a big part of their success in the third quarter. And right now, MKD are on the ropes. It's just incredible. Francisco Garcia, 25 points. Couldn't throw the ball in the ocean against Russia. And 26 points. McCaleb has a game high of 30. Tells you what kind of player he is. And foul called on Al Horford trying to keep Para Antich away. Now, this is what you want to avoid if you're the Dominican Republic because they're now in the penalty. You don't want fouls off the ball like this because this will allow the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia to get to the free throw line and seconds don't tick off the clock as they put points on the scoreboard. Absolutely, and it allows them to rest. It is absolutely crucial. But they don't commit silly fouls. Jeff, would you believe that that is Pato Antich's first points of the night? He averages 17 points a game. Well, just one of two, and they are in no rush for the Dominican Republic. Garcia. And Bo McCaleb came with an eyelash of picking that ball off. Jeff, I thought Garcia should have gone right at Antich on the dribble drive because he threw the, screw, the screen from Horford, and that left Antich on the ball. And so uh, the Dominican Republic dodged the bullet. McCaleb almost came over the steal. I thought he read it right, like a cornerback coming up for the interception. Garcia, better movement from the Dominicans here. Garcia finds Fortuna, ball goes out of bounds, and with seven seconds on the shot clock. You know, for the first time, we actually saw the Dominicans moving on offense. Yeah. The first time on the, in the game. Yeah. Good defense by the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia team. They kept their hands up, got the passing lane. Horford over to Martinez. And... Oh, crikey, Jeff. Three, three seconds, seconds on the shot clock. And also, now San Francisco has four fouls. I do not understand that, unless he thought there was going to be an easy layup. Okay, the, the MKD were so smart last year. I mean, they were just the smartest team at the Eurobasket. They just... Well, good block from behind, but... The Dominican Republic should throw it up top and work the clock a bit more, Jeff. What's happened here? So they're saying they didn't reset the shot clock all the way to 24. Well, it was, it was reset at 14 because when the foul was committed with three seconds, you get a, a fresh 14, relatively new rule change. So now it's 22. Dominican should go deep in the shot clock here. Just over a minute to play. Horford. <laughs> I thought she could give it to an NBA lottery pick for an open jump shot. Well, just a nine-point lead. And look at the hug from Martinez and Al Horford. They believe they're closer. And very, very disappointing, I'd say, last 
23 minutes of the game for that team right there. They just have lacked the energy. Yeah, they have. They have lacked the energy. No doubt the Dominican Republic are feeding off the energy of their fans to our right who are beating the drums and they're on their feet. There are far fewer former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia fans here. It's a long way back now, Jeff. I mean, it's possible, but uh, nine point difference, that's three possessions. A, a minimum of three possessions. If you get three points on each with a minute to go, you would have thought that the Dominican Republic have got one foot in the semifinals. Well, I'm not going to say the Dominicans have played well today because I think that for first half, really, they were they were awful. Yeah. So they fell behind by 20 points. They started hitting some shots, and I still think it's uh, it's going to be a big ask for them to get one of the Olympic places unless they can turn this thing around. But they've somehow they've gotten to grips thanks to Garcia's hot shooting and some serious rebounding from Al Horford. Dominican Republic want to make sure they do not foul here. Horford, by the way, has 14 rebounds. Ilyevsky, bounce pass to Antic, and, and that pretty much says it all for I think that'll do it, Jeff. That MKD. miss, that miss right there should just about ensure it for Dominican Republic. That's what happens. Antic spent most of the game on the bench. He's not in the flow. 42 seconds to go. The Dominicans. Garcia for three, breaks it, San Francisco. He needs to go right to the basket, Michaela. And they might give it, they and are. they're going to count it. And I don't think it was anywhere close to going in. No, it wasn't. And I don't think Calabar understands how they could allow it. And we'll have a look at it now, Jeff. Watch. Oh, because it went off the backboard. That's the only thing I can think. It touched the backboard first. But then it's on the rim. It's on the rim. I, I'm not sure. That's a tough call against them. But Caleb needs to convert this. And the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia have to extend up the floor in a press. Can they get a trap in the backcourt? If they don't get a turnover, they're going to need to foul quick. Oh, he's lucky he didn't get another sportsman like. Caleb shakes hands with Fortuna. Good bit of sportsmanship there. Yeah, they've obviously smoothed things over. They almost came to blows earlier tonight. Six points is, I think that maybe they could have given Bo the ball a little bit more here in the last three or four minutes. Because it seems like their most legitimate threat. I mean, how in the world Kara Antich missed that layup at yeah. the other end? That was just almost inexcusable. You know, you're, you're so close to a place at the Olympics, and it just doesn't seem like the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia have had the desire you know, to get that yeah, place. You're right. And this first free throw is huge, Jeff, because it makes it a three-possession game. This is a bonus if he gets it great, but it's three possessions now for the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, 25 ticks. Clock is the enemy, and Bo goes all the way in and ducks it. So he's got 33 points. And that's the foul. Yep, Ilyevsky fouls Ramon. 20 seconds to go. So Ramon now has to make free throws. As you say, if he makes one of them, it's uh, at least three possessions. Boyan Stoyanovsky at the scorer's table, ready to come in. Well, I'm just watching this, and I just cannot believe the Dominican Republic are in this position. They are now up by seven points. I just never seen a team get out of jail the way they have tonight. And it'll be interesting to see if they take advantage of it. But look at that team right there. They have really let an opportunity go by oh, the wayside. That's, that'll seal it right there. Martinez with another rebound and a missed free throw. That's uh, criminal if you're a former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia player. You've got to get those rebounds to give yourself any, any life in the game. They've almost played like uh, deer in the headlights. Like deer in the headlights for the last 20 minutes. I mean, they just haven't been the same team. It's when the pressure came on, too, isn't it, uh, Jeff? Because they were comfortable in the first half, played well, played smooth, played fluidly, went in with a 13-point lead. They just couldn't stem the momentum. Well, they were never clinical, though. They, you know, you never really got the feeling, even when they got up by 20, that they were getting ready just to run away. Yeah. And 
and um, at some point effort has to come into it. This is a great lesson to any young fans out there. This game was 20 points on one stage in the first half, but one of the beauties of this game is it's you can never count it as over until it's over. Especially with the three-point shot. He's got 28 points. And it looks like it's going to be all she wrote for the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia as Jack Michael Martinez gets the rebound and is fouled by Stoyanovsky. So, instead of saying that they didn't deserve it, let's salute the Dominican Republic because, you know what, sometimes it's hard and you don't, you know, you win ugly and you just have to take advantage of the opportunities that you get. But like you say, you never give up. So the Dominican Republic can uh, look forward to the final game. They'll play the winner of the last game tonight, which is Lithuania versus Puerto Rico. We have oh. potentially another upset in the making in that game. Well, I don't know who really would be the favorite team in that one, to be honest. Playing in the Americas, Horford comes out. And coming in is Elias uh, Guzman. Nice touch by Coach Calipari. Brings Horford out so he can get a rapturous round of applause by the fans behind the bench as uh, Horford waves to the fans. Jack Martinez makes that free throw. Not seeing Carl Towns get in, or are we? Yep, he is. Might be too late, though. I don't think he's going to be able to check in unless he makes the free throw to stop the clock. Nope, they're not going to get in. So Antic, Michaela, the last points of the game. Nope. That's how it finishes. The Dominican Republic. I won't say they've marched into the semifinals, but they've advanced. And the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia cap a disappointing FIBA Olympic qualifying tournament uh, with a collapse against the Dominican Republic. They lose 86 to 76. Dominicans will face the winners. They'll face either Lithuania or Puerto Rico. Jeff McCalla finishes with 35 points in a losing effort. It was a sterling performance from that young man. Sadly, Pino Antic with only yeah, one point as we look yeah. at uh, way, way, way. Jack Michael Martinez. And there's a look at the Dominican Republic fans who come from the island of Hispaniola here to northern South America. We're in Caracas, Venezuela, along the coast of the Caribbean. Francisco Garcia with a strong performance, the number nine for the Dominican Republic. Let's see if we can figure out how many points he finished with. Garcia with 28 points. He was the high point man for the Dominican Republic. Remember, this is the 2012 Olympic qualifying hey! tournament. We've got three of the four semifinalists in place. Hey! 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 The Dominican Republic, hey! 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 Nigeria, hey! and Russia. Hey! Only hey! one more place up for grabs. No! No! Lithuania versus no! Puerto Rico. No! 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 Please stick around if you can and join us for that. Remember, you can see all of the games live on FIBATV.com. And it's uh, party time here for the members of the Dominican Republic team. You can see the final score there. They pay tribute to their fans. On behalf of Jeff Taylor, I'm Liam Canny. I want to say, Austin Oego, come back and join us for the last game here in the Paliedro.